So here's a well-fed, happy, fat baby. You look under his under his chin there. His crop is full, so he's getting good meal. And this is in a very desolate area, this particular nest. But this baby's doing well. He's the only one. So this photo was taken. We don't know if the ba if it killed his sibling or if he didn't even have a sibling. But he did very well. So full size, just months after hatching, they get very large very quickly. And uh, this is pretty much what they look like their first year. Notice the white tail with a black tip and the white patches under their wings. And here's another first year golden eagle in flight. See that white tail. Now we normally say that a golden eagle takes five years to get its adult colors. So on the left that would be a first year tail and on the right a tail of a of an individual five years old or older. That's what you always see. That's what you hear. That's what you read in like a bird watching field guide. Um, for many Native American tribes, eagles were revered and were sacred, and many tribes utilized a an eagle feather war bonnet, such as this, a headdress. Now, uh, modern culture and and movie Hollywood ideas have made people think it's a bald eagle. It's not. If you take a look closely, these are the tail feathers of a one-year-old golden eagle. And so that that is the tradition. One-year-old golden eagle tail feathers for the eagle feather headdress. Now, every tribe had their own tradition, but by count and by numbers, typically to have a full loop would take two eagle tails. Now, here's another picture of what you might see in a field guide. Left to right would be maybe a one-year-old bird, a three-year-old bird, and a five-year-old bird. But what we've found is that nature breaks the rules. So this is pretty standard. This is a bird, four-year-old, molting into five-year, obeying the rules. But the molt pattern rule of yearly color phase change for the first five years is not always true. So take a look at this bird. On the far left to right, looking at its tail, its far left tail feather is a four-year-old feather. The next three are one-year-old feathers. The next tail feather is a five-year-old feather. And then the next two in the middle are three-year-old feathers, and so on down the line. So apparently, they break the rules at times. I've talked to other people around the United States who work with eagles, both in education, falconry, and rehab, and have found this to be true. Some eagles' feather patterns follow the rules. Some do not. Now, let's talk about what's on the dinner menu for golden eagles. I mentioned earlier the jackrabbits in most areas are the primary and preferred food source, that and cottontail rabbits. But uh, they do hunt some much larger prey as well. Red foxes, swift foxes, gray foxes, they all figure into the diet. Coyotes are quite regularly hunted. And um, it's interesting to note in Mongolia, in Kazakhstan, golden eagles are trained to hunt wolves from horseback. Mountain goats, bighorn sheep, pronghorn or antelope, and even deer. Now in the case with all of these larger animals, a golden eagle is like any other animal. It wants to eat the easiest meal it can. It would rather go after a rabbit than a fox, rather go after a fox than a coyote, rather go after a coyote than a deer, rather go after a young deer than an adult deer. Now with these larger animals, they cannot carry them. They knock them over and eat them where they catch them. Uh, I did have a lot of photos uh, that people have sent me of some of these attacks on larger animals but many of them are quite gory so I decided not to include them in this presentation but uh, a quick Google search can also pull up a lot of these they also attack cameramen when they are mad now sometimes nest sites demonstrate some of the mo most interesting prey items I just listed a lot of big animals but it's sometimes the small animals that impress me more so here's some photos from some nests uh, here's some baby golden eagles with a kingbird. This is a tiny, very agile songbird. This bird is so maneuverable and so quick that it catches insects, flying insects. So if you have that kind of maneuverability, uh, an eagle is catching you not by its maneuverability, but by its thought and its wit, uh, because this bird could outfly a golden eagle easily. Uh, this nest, the feathers you see in this nest, 
are wild turkey feathers. It's a very big bird. It puts up a lot of fight and has spurs on its legs. And also a badger. Now that's a young badger. It's not a full-grown adult looking at the size of it. But you've got a nest where badgers and turkeys are being hunted. Here is a western meadowlark. Again, every bit as agile as that kingbird. And amazing that, that a, an adult golden eagle was able to catch that and bring it to its young. This is a bit of an odd one. There's two odd things in here. You can, well, three. The blackbirds are ravens, which is impressive to catch a raven. And there is, there's one, two, three, four or five gray foxes with radio collars on them. So it's kind of sad that these were gray foxes that were part of a steady and they ended up getting eaten by an eagle. And on the far, far left of the nest, there's a feather that's grayish with a black tip. That's a seagull. So most likely a California gull. So here is, instead of rabbits, this eagle is hunting seagulls, foxes, and ravens. And this came into a wildlife rehab center here in northern Utah. This eagle uh, unfortunately came in. You look under its chin and on its feet. This eagle caught a porcupine. Uh, this eagle made it okay, but uh, it had so many quills in its feet, it couldn't open its feet and push off because the pain was too great. Now, with ha those removed and on some antibiotics, uh, these wildlife rehabilitators did a great job of nursing it back to health. But that's a hard lesson learned for a young eagle. You can imagine the pain he was in, but, but he survived. So how this is the end of part four of this PowerPoint. Check out part five to see the rest of the presentation.